our celebration of the ascension of our Lord comes from the book of Acts, the first chapter, starting at the first verse. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands to the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you send at this time to restore your kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has fixed for his own authority. But you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said these things, and as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the first chapter. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe? according to the workings of his great might that he worked in Jesus when he, was, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one that is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in every name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with the power from on high. Then he departed from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple of blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A blessed ascension day to you all. We focus our attention on these words from Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 44. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, 
and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the word of the Lord. St. Luke's gospel ends exactly where it begins, in the temple. In the temple for the worship of God. It begins with Zechariah, John the Baptist's father, fulfilling his duties as a priest while the people of God offered him their worship and praise. And Luke then sets out to offer to us an orderly account. So this orderly account ends the way that it begins. Now with the disciples gathered together in the temple, worshiping their Savior. There's a lot that happens between those two scenes. But part of the, Luke's lesson is that God's grace and his love for his people is what drives them to gather for worship and what sends them out from worship. In a sense, our life has a rhythm to it, a posture of worship, a life of worship, of receiving the gifts of God and then responding in praise and thanksgiving and responding in offering our lives as spiritual sacrifices. Jesus had done much to prepare his disciples for his ascension into heaven. He had sent them out into the mission field on their own to prepare for the time when he would no longer be there. He had warned them that there would be opposition, that there would be a cost for following him. He had taught them that they were part of God's great mission to seek and to save that which was lost. And now he gives them a charge that this gospel message, this good news of repentance and forgiveness of sins must be preached to all nations, beginning first there in Jerusalem. And then he blesses them and is promptly taken up before their very eyes. But unlike at Easter, where there is so much uncertainty and doubt that remains in the minds of God's people. The disciples understand clearly what Jesus Christ has done and what they are to do. They don't cower in fear of this time. They don't hide behind closed doors. They aren't confused and perplexed. No, Luke says that they are filled with joy. Oh, yes, Christ Jesus has left them, but he's told them exactly what they are to do. He has told them how they will be strengthened for God's mission, that they won't be abandoned and forsaken, that they would receive power from the Holy Spirit in just a matter of days. And so they return to Jerusalem with great joy. The last verse of Luke's gospel is so often forgotten. We tend to focus so much on either the beginning of Acts or the end of John's gospel, and we miss this joyful conclusion to Luke's orderly account. Jesus has gone, but his disciples are filled with joy because they know what he has done for them. And they know the mission that he's given to them to proclaim that message to the ends of the earth. They have been blessed 
by the blessed one. They have been blessed by having all of their sins forgiven. They have been blessed by receiving that last testament of Christ's own body and blood. They have been blessed by being restored and reconciled unto God the Father through his son Jesus. The disciples, as they return to Jerusalem, understand how blessed they are. And so when they reach the temple, they praise, they bless God in return. Their lives are filled, overflowing with joy. The life and ministry of Jesus Christ fills disciples of every age with joy. And it moves us to respond in worship and praise. Over the last few weeks, perhaps your worship and praise, like my family's, has been a little bit different. Our family singing has never been the best. Oh, we croak through it. We do our best, but we aren't the most gifted of singers. And yet we recognize that we're lifting our voices with our fellow congregation members scattered across the region. And in fact, we don't just lift our voices with the other members of our respective congregations. Our voices are joined together with all of God's people from one congregation to the next. And in fact, with all the saints from all times, with all the company of heaven that we laud and magnify our glorious God for what he has done for us. We have been blessed by God with so much. He has forgiven us of our sins. He has given to us the promise of eternal life. And so we respond with thanks and praise. We bless God for the blessings that he has poured out upon us. Jesus' ministry was always one of calling, of healing, and sending, of restoring, forgiving, and blessing and his abundant blessings fill his disciples with joy. The joy of sins forgiven, the joy of paradise restored, the joy and certainty that just as Christ died and rose again, so shall we. In our worship, no matter the quality of the voice, our worship is always joyful because in worship we have encountered Christ, His very presence for us in word and in sacrament. And as the psalmist says, you fill me with joy in your presence. And so the world rushes on oblivious to what a few Christians, Lutheran Christians and a few others are doing on a Thursday. As we sit down to take a break from all of our other activities and to be blessed by the presence of God through his word. And so we're filled with great joy. For Christ has ascended to the Father's right hand and he is awaiting that last day when he will come again in glory and he will raise all the dead. On a Thursday of all days, we're filled with great joy because Christ completed the work that his Father gave him to do. On a Thursday, we're filled with great joy because Jesus doesn't leave us alone. He sent us the promised Holy Spirit. On a Thursday, we're filled with great joy because the risen and ascended Christ descends to us in the simple form of of his word. As his word is preached, prayed, and sung, he is present for his people to forgive sins and to strengthen us for the continued days ahead. And on a Thursday, we are filled with joy because we are filled with Christ Jesus. But we don't stay 
in the temple. When Jesus ascends to the, in, into heaven, his disciples returned to Jerusalem and they went into the temple and they worshipped him there, but they didn't remain. For when they received the promised Holy Spirit at Pentecost, they went forth in fulfillment of what Jesus had described as repentance and forgiveness are proclaimed in his name to all nations. They went out as part of Jesus' mission. They went out in response to that charge that was given to them. And so we don't remain here. We don't remain, but we go forth as our Lord bids. These are certainly strange times when the people of God are not able to assemble in the ways that we have in the past. But we are still blessed by Christ and his word as the gospel is proclaimed. That good news pierces our ears and our hearts and it fills us with great joy because we have a Savior who returned to his Father after completing his mission of saving his people. But our Lord Jesus Christ continues to carry out his mission of mercy to seek and to save the lost, to redeem and to rescue wayward children, and to call those who are living in darkness into the marvelous light of his love. And he carries it out all through his church, even still today. The church is God's mission to the world. And even though the church is functioning maybe in unique ways compared to the way that we were just a few weeks ago. What has not changed is the focus on proclaiming that gospel message, that good news, because that message has not changed. It may be delivered over the television or the computer or other ways, but the message has not changed, nor has God's mission and while we look forward to when we can assemble together for worship, we know that the goal is not just to remain here, but that we gather together to be fed and strengthened, to be filled with joy, to respond in praise and thanksgiving, and then to go forth as God carries out his mission through us. We don't stay because we've got places to go and people to see. God is using us so that that gospel message can be proclaimed. God's good news is being announced to all the nations, to all people. On this Ascension Day, we pray that you are blessed by Christ Jesus, that you are overflowing and filled with joy and that you see how God uses you to be a part of his mission. We look forward to the joyful worship of the saints when our congregations return together for worship without restrictions, without limitations, but simply the saints of God gathered together around Christ Jesus at the center. But the reality is we look forward to the ultimate fulfillment of that worship. When the saints and angels and all the choir of heaven are gathered together on the last day, and we join our voices in praise and blessing of Jesus, the Savior. Oh, what joy there will be when that day comes. Until then, may God bless you and may he fill you with joy as you look forward to that which we await. Christ has died. Christ has risen and Christ will come again. A blessed Ascension Day to you all. Amen.
an angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favor, for God is with you. You shall bear a child and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God, I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Ascended Lord, you rule as king, seated at the right hand of the Father, ruling in power and might, in grace and mercy. You have not left us as orphans, but have sent your Holy Spirit into our hearts to fill us with your joyous presence. By your Spirit working in your word, grant that our eyes be turned from looking to the heavens to looking at the lost world to which we are called to be your witnesses. Give us the courage to proclaim boldly your saving word of grace and mercy. Ascended Lord, we await your return. For as your disciples saw you go, so will you return. Grant that we may await your second coming with anticipation and not with fearfulness or dread. Strengthen our faith in you, that we may look forward to that day when you return to take us to be with yourself. God of compassion, during this time of pandemic, be close to those who are ill, in mourning, afraid, or in isolation. 
In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give also skill, sympathy, and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work many will be restored to health. For the spread of the gospel to all lands, for peace in our troubled world, for justice to be served, for nations to honor you, for seasonable weather, for all things that give glory to you, we pray, asking your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our ascended Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.